Basketball on BTN is presented by April Air. Feel good inside. And brought to you in part by State Farm. It pays to double check. Call your agent today. And by Panera Bread. Panera gift cards are perfect for everyone on your list this holiday season. Oh, the atmosphere inside the building here in East Lansing. As the Michigan State starting lineup is introduced to the crowd, here are your starting lineups. Buffalo Wild Wings starting lineup for Michigan State includes the guys that we talked about up front. And Travis Trice and Brandon Dawson. Denzel Valentine, a co-captain for this team. Forbes, interesting story today in that he's gotten a change in what was on his hand. He had had a broken bone, was dealing with a cast kind of a thing that was on his left hand. He's been refitted now. That's the good news. The guy to watch on the other side is Milton Doyle for Loyola of Chicago. Milton Doyle, Scott. The newcomer of the year a season ago in the Missouri Valley Conference led them in every category, scoring, rebounding, assists, and blocks. He will be the focal point of Michigan State's defensive game plan. Now Loyola coming in with a 2-0 record on the year with wins over Rockhurst and McKendry. Michigan State, on the other hand, a 1-1 one one record, the win on the road at Navy. And the loss against Duke, 20th season as the head coach of the Spartans. 469 wins, an eight-time National Coach of the Year. And Porter Moser at his fourth season as the head coach of the Ramblers with a 34-61 and 61 record. It's his job to kind of turn this program around, something he did very quickly in his second season. Trying to get back to the winning ways. Here this year, he's got a lot of experience coming back. And a big adjustment, Scott, going from the Horizon League and upgrading in terms of budgets that he has to face going into the Missouri Valley Conference. But uh, they struggled last year rebounding the basketball. That's going to be an area of concern against a much larger and athletic Michigan State squad here tonight. Well, there's a major size advantage for Michigan State coming into this game, and you would imagine they're going to try to exploit that. The Ramblers, a team that is height challenged to only one player on the roster who's six eight or taller and taking care of the basketball is going to be very important for loyola as well they cannot afford any open floor turnovers which allows the athleticism of the michigan state spartans to get up and down the floor and the ramblers control Working around the perimeter. They've shot it well their first couple of games at 55% from the floor. That's Montel James working inside. A little short on the jump hook shot, but the tip rebound for Thomas. And that's their three-point shooter, Turk, missing from three. Nice job, though, by James of keeping that play alive for Loyola. Valentine on the run. And that ball last touch Loyola stays the same way. I thought Costello Scott had a chance to maybe corral that with two hands rather than try the back tap. Shoot around today, a Spartans team that was very, very active, very vocal, very enthusiastic. Down on the block, Costello got the first bucket of the game. Good recognition by Michigan State, Scott, of understanding exactly what we were talking about. The size advantage they have down low. They go into Costello. Loyola doesn't double them. Easy baby hook. And an offensive foul. Going to be called on the baseline on Christian Thomas is first. One of the things you get into a game like this, and I'm sure it's a concern for Coach Moser, is the fact that if you throw an early haymaker at this team, you get a big early lead, sometimes that has a tendency to snowball on itself, and this becomes a different type of a ball game. Especially in an environment like this that Loyola has not faced thus far this season. Shoveling it down on the block. Dawson going to work one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, what a pretty move by Trice. It was an alley-oop. Costello took it down and put it back up. And Trice just froze the defender with that crossover dribble, got him up out of his stance, and then just threw it up toward the rim for Costello. I think I was leaning one way. Just inside the foul line, and Milton Doyle, the guy to keep an eye on, scores the first bucket of the game for Loyola. And you notice the shoulder sleeve. He has a torn labor. He's playing through, suffered that in the offseason. They were concerned about whether he'd be able to come back and play to his level. Well, 
He looks fine, thanks, averaging 17 points in his first two. That's a pretty feed. Doesn't get a whole lot better on the assist from Denzel Valentine. And the big man, Costello, inside is having some fun here in the opening two minutes. Whistle off the ball, and the foul call is going to go against Brandon Dawson. Well, they're going inside early and often. A couple possessions ago, Travis Trice just lays it up, allowing Matt Costello to catch it. Then a bullet pass by Denzel Valentine. Good job of making himself available, and the defender turns his head. Costello senses that. Valentine found it. And we talked about the major size advantage that Michigan State has coming into the game, and they certainly have exploited it each time down the floor so far. Costello at 6'9", bigger than anybody that Loyola's got. This communication, Montel James didn't realize that that pass was coming. It's second turnover for the Ramblers. And I like what Milton Doyle did after the pass went through James's hands. He went up to him and said, hey, calm down. We're going to be okay. When your best player, who has to do so many things, is able to go to his teammate who's a JUCO transfer, never played in an environment like this, you don't want to compound it by jumping on him. Earl Peterson and Dante Ingram check into the ball game. Couple of newcomers to this Loyola team. Again, right down on the block. And Dawson having his own private tip drill, but it's taken away by Christman. I can't imagine that this is an easy environment for an opponent to try to settle in for the ball game. Especially with so many players who have relatively new to the program. Doyle the miss, an easy rebound for Costello. Trice once again, the teardrop. I thought he was going to leave another pass to Costello, and I think he was thinking the same thing. Costello got kind of bumped off his path to the rim, and Trice had the presence of mind to put it up right toward the glass, nice and soft. He's looking like a magician with the basketball here in these first couple of possessions. Half-court offense. Nothing's coming easy trying to get it inside for the Ramblers. Shot clock down to seven. And from the baseline, Doyle misfires. That's an ear takeaway. Now you got a numbers advantage. And guess who's on the block again? This time knocked away from behind by Montel James. There's a steal. Well, he telegraphed that pass. Very easy deflection for Valentine. And a great pass by Valentine, leaving it for Dawson. Porter Moser's got to take a timeout, even though one is coming at the next whistle, because right now his team is on the wrong end of a 10-2 start. Well, Michigan State out to the start that Tom Izzo, I'm sure, was hoping for. They've been able to exploit the inside. They've forced three turnovers. They've gotten out in transition. A lot of the things you want to see for the home opener. All 10 points for the Spartans thus far. Scott have come in the paint, and Loyola has not done anything to help themselves. They averaged 13 turnovers per ball game a year ago in the Missouri Valley Conference, dead last in that category. They've had a couple of open floor turnovers, which have led to breakout opportunities for Michigan State so far. Last year was their first year in the Missouri Valley Conference after years in the Horizon League. Up and under, the shot short. How about the rebound follow? That one won't go for Christian Thomas. And back the other way, Trice in transition, waiting for help to arrive. He is just fully in charge of what's happening on the floor. That's Clark. And he got it from three. He was missing that shot and shoot around, and his teammates were all over him. They made him shoot it four times in a row before he buried it. He was just waiting for the lights to come on, Scott. He wasn't going to do it with just us there. <laughs> that was something. Take away. Trice for three. 
Nice block out down there by Doyle. Really good job by Milton Doyle. This place was prepared to explode if there was a made three, but instead they can explode on the turnover, which gives it back to Michigan State. Well, this guy going inside paid dividends, and why not step out your big guy? Marvin Clark knocking it down. I'll take all three of those. Michigan State up big early. Let's take a look at tonight's State Farm State of Success. 20th season as a Spartans head coach, Tom Izzo has had basically nothing but success. Yesterday was the anniversary of his first win in his coaching career against Chaminade, averaging nearly 25 wins a year in 17 straight NCAA tournament bursts. They were there last year, got to the Elite Eight before bowing out to the eventual national champion, UConn. Let's not forget, you know, after that first win, I'm sure Coach Izzo was telling everybody, hey, let's not forget, Chaminade beat Ralph Sampson and the Virginia Cavaliers in 1979. Scott, I have no useful information, but we'll kill some time. I got a lot of things going on <laughs> noodling around up there. I'll tell you what, you've been around the Big Ten for quite some time now. I would imagine it just builds up, doesn't it? Kind of like mold. <laughs> this is something that the Spartans were working on extensively toward the end of shoot around. This offensive set. And down low, jump hook shot for Gavin Schilling. And Schilling, a good job of being able to rip through that double team. Loyola and sent down the double. He was able to play through it as this white dink came down, able to capture and go back up. And now you're going to get a foul call, a hold. And it's going to go against Clark. Loyola had not been running a double, but it comes down here, tries to rake it down, but good strength by Schilling to maintain composure, go up over that shoulder. They just have such a size advantage down low that Loyola's really not going to have any choice, Scott, but to run double teams and try to force them to beat them from outside. Once that double team shows up, you know it gets kicked outside, and then you've got a Michigan State team that loves to shoot the three and has had a lot of success, including a record-setting number in that department last year. Any way you slice it, tall order for the Ramblers. And the miss. They keep on coming for this Loyola team. We've only had one field goal so far in the opening seven minutes. Down the corner. He made it on the first one, but Clark missing on the long-range three, and it goes back the other way. That's a teachable moment, I think, over there on the sideline. It looked like it. And the teaching will continue. That is a very, very strong young man. They've got very high hopes for it. And he's learning as he goes now here in just the third game of his collegiate career. Finally, a shot in rhythm. Still won't fall, though, as Ben Richardson, the freshman, misses. Once again, Trice saw the floor, made the right pass. Just a little bit too strong for Gavin Schiller. And a good job of defensive recovery by Loyola because they ran down that double team and forced Schilling to give it up. Tum Tum Naren Jr. Running the point right now. Shot clock winds down. He's going to have to make a decision. Tried to get it to Schilling. And that's going to be a shot clock violation. And that's something that Loyola can kind of hang their hat on. A nice defensive sequence by the Ramblers. But so far, offensively, Michigan State finally it on 15-2. 15-2 in their home opener. And, Scott, a big reason for that is their size advantage inside and their willingness to exploit that advantage of the 15 points on the board thus far. 12 have come in the paint. Travis Trice getting involved in the action as well. They've noticed they have a size advantage. They've gone inside, and Matt Costello really set the tone early. Costello, as we said, with that size advantage at six foot nine, seemed to be getting a touch each time down the floor in the early going. And one of the things that Michigan State is doing now as well is they're going to try as best they can to rotate as many guys through tonight as they can, trying to keep everybody fresh. Now, granted, Tuesday over to Friday is not the biggest turnaround, but they've got a trip and the beginning of a tournament on Monday. And if you're Tom Izzo, and you've got the opportunity to see if you can get guys a little bit of rest while staying sharp, that's a good thing. 
especially going into, as you mentioned, that tournament type of setting. They start with Ryder down in Orlando and potentially could face either Georgia Tech or Marquette in the second round, and ultimately it's set up that they may play Kansas in that third and final game. I said six of their first eight games away from home. The only top 25 team in the nation that is taking on that kind of a mantle. So what I'm saying here is get a good look around. <laughs> you see a whole lot of the home floor for a while. Valentine from 19. Good job by Valentine there, Scott, of doing his work while the ball was in the air. He got his feet set. He came across very strong, caught it, went right into his motion. Didn't have to bend his knees. Six different Spartans have scored here on the way out to this 17-2 lead. That's James, and he got it. This is the second field goal for the Ramblers. Nice unselfish play by Milton Doyle. They're running a double team every time off that high ball screen, and rather try to force a play, he gave it up to his teammate. Valentine double team. Somebody's open. Dawson will take it. It tickled the rim and fell away, and you're going to get a foul call on the rebound. It's going to be on Gavin Schilling. Tomorrow and BTN, the Buckeyes look to stay at the Hunter College football playoff when they host Indiana for So we'll see Michigan State battle Rutgers at noon. And at 3.30, it's Maryland taking on Michigan. Tomorrow night, it's Hoops. The Hoosiers host Lamar. That's the Badgers squaring off with Boise State. Coverage starts at 8 Eastern, presented by April Air on BTN and BTN to go. And how about Indiana's big win versus SMU? SMU, a top 25 team coming in. That freshman backcourt, particularly led by James Blackman Jr., very impressive. That's going to be fun to watch. It's going to be fun to watch them grow up. Maybe not for the rest of the Big Ten. Down in the corner. Way too strong for Peterson. Michigan State running multiple defenders at Milton Doyle, forcing him to give the ball up. Feet inside and good anticipation by Thomas who saw that coming. On oh, the second turnover for the Spartans. Way downtown. Wow. Apparently the range is the building for Milton Doyle. And a pretty good job by Christian Thomas of setting just enough of the screen to take out the defender Dawson. Doyle was the Missouri Valley Newcomer and Freshman of the Year. Both awards last year. Give you an idea of how dominant he was. His first season out of Chicago. That's a great look inside. Good share of the basketball. Nice job by Dawson of recognizing the defender turned his head. Dove right to the rim. Costello found him. Transition time now for the Spartans. And once again, oh. great looks inside, and the tip follow is good for Dawson. The interior passing the last two times down the floor, very impressive. First, it was Costello delivering to Dawson, then Dawson returned the favor. Costello not able to get the job done, but Dawson showing you why he averages nine rebounds a game. And how about going with the fundamental bounce pass that's there? Oh, that was beautiful. And putting enough mustard on it so the big guy could get it without having to go down above his shoe tops. He used to pass the ball that way. I, there are people that play with me that say he never passed, so <laughs> it's all relevant. Some wrestling off the ball, and the foul ball is going to be on Dawson. Take a look up top. Dawson. The defender turns his head. He goes right to the rim. Zero. So go ahead and roll that. Nice job. Once the defender turned his head, that's an automatic dive. Dawson recognized it. Costello found him. Another takeaway. Just as quick as that. And there's going to be some in this ball game. You're going to get a whistle off the ball, and the foul call going to go against Ingram as the freshman picks up his first for Loyola. Football score here almost 12 minutes in. Well, at least everyone's made their extra points. They're not gimmies. There's Forbes, as we said, playing with a different contraption on that left hand. It had been a cast type of thing, and it really impeded what he was able to do. Long range, buried for Trice for three. To pay off your point about 
Brent Flores, what it really has impacted his ability to do is dribble the basketball. He became almost exclusively a catch and release shooter. So Duke in particular was able to run guys out at him because he wasn't able to put the ball on the floor effectively with that left hand. And a throw away is going to result in the seventh turnover in this first half for Loyola. Time out on the floor with 7.47 to go in the first. Right now, it's all Michigan State. And Digital Network is now BTN Plus, available on BTN to go. Subscribe to BTN Plus and gain access to hundreds of non-televised games and enjoy them on more platforms wherever you are. Get BTN Plus now, available on BTN to go. Here's just a peek at some of what you can enjoy on BTN Plus in the coming days. Michigan State has been enjoying thus far is sharing the basketball. 11 field goals here in the early going for the Michigan State Spartans. Nine coming via the assist. Well, that's something they were very good at last year. They had a school single season record with 637 assists last year. That's better than 16 and a half per game. And this year coming into this game, they had an assist on 62% of their field goals. So clearly it's something that they bought into last year and it's carrying over to this season to try to stem the tide of going inside. Loyola showing a little bit of his own defense, trying to take away that size advantage. I gotta wonder what it took so long to get to this, but Clark just pulling his way down the right side of the lane. He's got five. Yeah, that move had all the subtlety of a two by four <laughs> to the head. Just dropped his shoulder and put it right to the rim. Well, when you're 6'6", 225, and you're built like that, why not? Shot clock didn't reset. Down now to five. And Doyle on the run, an air ball. Costello, big time outlet pass. And here they go, look at a run as Forbes pays it off. Timeout called for by the Ramblers. Costello making like Wes Unsell. His team is up 21. 28 to 7 right now with 6.43 left to go in the first half. Michigan State just doing a whole lot of things right in the half court in transition defensively. And you know, no head coach is ever really entirely happy. But I got to imagine that Tom Izzo is pretty content with a lot of the things his team is doing right now. Especially with the way, Scott, they have shared the basketball. That last basket before we went to break, a prime example. Off the miss from Doyle. One pass and then another, the ball never hit the floor until it was completed by fours with the layup at the other end. Well, he's got a big tree to chop down right now. And they haven't shown the ability to find one thing that they can rely on offensively in the half court that can be the go-to, except for this guy. Doyle thought he had contact and a foul, no call. Up ahead, Forbes. And Clark got it blocked from behind by Doyle, but he's going to go to the free throw line. And everything is such a struggle right now for Loyola in the half court set that when they do get a shot up toward the rim, they cannot afford to hang their head if it doesn't go in because Michigan State is able to get it and go. Marvin Clark Jr. Have one more try. Take a look at the arms on this guy. It's not, like, it's not like looking in the mirror, I can tell you that. He can bench press 185 26 times. I once lifted 185 Little Debbie Cakes. Does that count? I can bench press 185, but it's, it's, it's a pound at a time. It takes a long time. It's reps. That's what it's all about. I'll tell you what. I want to talk about the sky's the limit in terms of what he can do physically. They love the way he plays around the basket. They love his shot. Now it's a matter of teaching a little bit more about how they want him to play the game. Which you see a lot with freshmen. Loyola has just been kept exclusively between the rings for 25 to 30 seconds of each possession. Wild shot high off the glass for Doyle. Well, how about the catch? And the pass, but the traveling violation on Costello. Going to be the third turnover on Michigan State. A nice job by Montel James of sprinting down the floor. If he doesn't sprint 
to the rim and then come back out. Costello's going to be able to catch and gather, but James was there in his way. Nice job by James in not giving up on the play. How did you know Coach was ever truly entirely oh, yeah. happy? Loyola's shooting just three out of 16 and only one for six from three-point range. There's another three. And that one will go. Jay Newt, freshman out of Johnston, Iowa. Makes it a 20-point game now. Check out. Sorry, his foot was on the line. My bad. Showing he can hit that shot. That was definitively a three-pointer. Five points now for Forbes. He was also on the spot during shoot-around today for one spot on the floor. His teammates gave it to him for a little while until he hit it. All in a good-natured way, but it certainly does put the pressure on you as a shooter. Yeah, they were letting him know. There's no question about it. Valentine. Maybe not the shot they wanted to transition. A little quick. And Coach Izzo said it, but maybe not as politely. From the corner, Richardson. That one is a three. Martin Richardson, a three. You know what? I'm Michigan State. I'm going to slow it down a little bit here and play some half-court yep. basketball. I think that's what Tom Izzo is thinking as he calls for a timeout. Things getting a little ragged despite the 20-point lead for the home team. Maryland takes on Michigan. Tomorrow night, back to hoops. The Hoosiers host Lamar, then the Badgers squaring off with Boise State. Coverage starts at 8 Eastern, presented by April Air on BTN and BTN to go. That's a heck of a Saturday. Basically what you do is you hunker down, find a good spot in your right chair or the correct couch, and you really don't have to move all day. We can, uh, you know what, let's trademark it. Sedentary Saturday. I'm sure that somebody will have a honeydew list they got to be dealing with, but that's been thrown away. And apparently, Brandon Dawson was upset enough that he came back and said, that's not going to work. He was still reacting to the throwaway coming down the floor and said, yeah, that, get that out of here. That looked like you, right? Uh, two arms and two legs, yes. Under four minutes left to play here in the half, and Loyola has been held down to just 12 points. Doyle, nice shot fake. Really solid play. They're running so many defenders at him. He didn't rush and waited for the flyby. They dribbled under control and didn't over dribble, dribbling into the defensive help. Back to his own look now for the Ramblers. They go 3-2. Little 2-3 look up top here. Ooh. Apparently nobody was checking the back line. It's chilling and easy, two on the alley-oop. You have to talk in that back line of defense. And the other thing, Scott, if you're going to be up top in that line of defense, you have to provide some ball pressure and not allow the ball handler to look unimpeded over the top. On the turnaround. Another rebound, and Trice looking ahead. Pretty pass down low, and just off the fingers of Brandon Dawson. You're looking for timing in the early part of the year. It may not have worked on that play, but by and large, it's worked throughout this first half for Michigan State. Lead is 20 for the home team right now, with under three minutes left to go here in the first half, and the crowd just enjoying every last minute of it, in the minute of it, I should say, in this home opener. Lots of like, points in the paint. Certainly, to say it's a domination would be an understatement, 22 to 2. 13 assists on 15 baskets for the Spartans thus far, and they've turned over the Ramblers eight times, converting those into 12 points. 15 made field goals and 13 to say 15 assists against Duke on Tuesday. That game was one that Duke's depth really got to the Spartans, especially when Michigan State got in foul trouble early in the first half. An easy two for Schilling along the inside. And you don't want to forget that even with all of that, Spartans were down by three with under 12 and a half left to go. And 
Uh, Thomas was telling us today, that's when they, Duke had the opportunity to just kind of wear his team down. And that's exactly what happened. And there are a couple of other big plays as Loyola, the frustration continues to mount with an offensive foul on Christian Thomas as he's trying to clear space. But they weren't able to get over the proverbial hump because they fouled a guy on a three-point shot. They fouled Tyus Jones, which really allowed the Blue Devils to regain and then expand on that momentum. Four-point plays are backbreakers. And especially when you're, you know, fighting that uphill climb to try to stay in that ball game. Going against the zone look again now with under two minutes left to go here in the half. And the errant throw. Not a whole lot that Valentine is going to be able to do to bring that in. And Michigan State has turned it over now six times here in the first half. So the zone is, they're sprinting back, are the Ramblers, and just setting up in that zone. And it's taken away some of the transition opportunities and at least given them a chance to force Michigan State to burn some clock. I can't imagine why they wouldn't sit in that zone for the most part in the second half. Driving down the lane, that's some kind of move. Everything but the basket for Milton Doyle. Now Trice. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but halftime, it's the State Farm Halftime Report with Mike Hall and Drew Nicholas. Lot to talk about in the world of college basketball, college sports right now. Thanksgiving is next week. I'm getting in shape. I'm ready. Is that something you actually build up to over the course of the? Yeah, you don't you don't put together this type of physique without training year round. Oh, that is true. I can see that. And what's that stuff? The trick the fan? Is that what's in turkey? Yeah. yeah. You got to build up the tolerance. Obviously, you tolerate it well. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Drink some drink some gravy. Just got to ease into it. Uh, easy too for Valentine with the left hand. Biggest lead of the half now for Michigan State with under a minute to play till halftime. And certainly no need, Scott, if you're loyal, to take a quick shot and allow another breakout opportunity. Burn some clock here. That one from 18 is no good for Newt. That's going back the other way. Zero. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, the State Farm Halftime Report. I call Drew Nicholas. Take a look at what's going on around. The Big Ten. We're down to a differential between game and shot clock of about nine seconds right now. That's Forbes. Looks confident, looks a lot more comfortable with the different contraption he's got on his left hand now. And a pretty good job by Ingram down there are battling the much larger Michigan State front line. And a carry. Tenth turnover of the half for Loyola. So Tom Izzo's team going to get the last opportunity here in the half. That was an easy call for the official to make, Scott, because anytime the ball comes completely to rest and you turn it over, there's a difference between that and what people see with a crossover dribble. But once they, the hand is completely under the ball and it comes to rest, easy call. Trice. Little one-on-one. -on -one. Talk about breaking the ankles of the defender. Shot wouldn't fall, though, and that's going to do it for the first half of play. A lot of good things in that first half for Michigan State. And they are going to leave the floor enjoying the biggest lead that they have had all night. Michigan State in front of the home crowd for the first time this year leads it by 24 at the break. Back with the State Farm Halftime Report right after this. Basketball on BTN is brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings. Wings, beer, sports. Kind of a relaxed night for the entire of the Izzo. Looks like everybody's pretty laid back tonight because Michigan State enjoyed their biggest lead of the night by 24 as we get set for second half action. Shooting 61% in that first half. 14 assists and a big advantage as we expected in points of the paint.
And they also turned over Loyola, particularly early, allowing themselves some early breakout opportunities. And the Ramblers just not able to get into any kind of offensive flow defensively. All the attention was focused on Milton Doyle and to pay dividends for Michigan State. You get into an early season game like this, and obviously, if you're Michigan State, there's things that you want to be able to work on in this second half. But how do you approach a second half of action? I mean, obviously, you've got this game very well in hand right now, but you certainly don't want there to be any possibility of a miracle in the other direction. And there's got to be things specifically the coaches are working on. Particularly continuing to share the basketball and then the defensive intensity, because a lot of times what will happen if a, if a score gets as inflated as it is right now, Scott, you'll see guys start to try to leak out and get easy baskets and free baskets. I think he wants them to make sure that they continue to lock down on the defensive end of the floor, honor the scouting report, pound the ball inside, and that'll allow him to get, as you mentioned a little bit earlier in the evening, some more players to come in there because right now they're they're battling some injuries in their own right, and they have to get some uh, minutes to some guys that they may need later on. Spartans touch it first here to start the second half. And we get a whistle. A little bit more than 10 seconds in. Joe Crispin call for the personal on the reach. That's Crispin's first. Good job of defending the inbound by the Ramblers, and Spartans have to take it all the way to the backcourt. Looks like he got a little bit of renewed purpose here out of the Ramblers playing man defense. You can see it in the body language as they begin the second half. Yeah, they're just switching everything inside, but they don't have an answer for the slip of the screen up high by Costello, and Michigan State begins the second exactly the way they started this ball game. I thought that looked familiar. We're just heading putting our eyes in the other direction. He's, that screen and that pop to the outside is something that Michigan State worked on taking away in shoot around today. They've done a good job of it. Down the lane. That's the first easy look on a feed that Montel James has got. And a good job by Loyola of keeping the dribble alive until James was able to dive to the rim. Valentine. That pass was off, but he didn't move his feet. His feet were set. He leaned his body, caught the ball, went right back, gather underneath, and straight and true, he's got seven. And Valentine has been very unselfish, kind of leading the way tonight. He's got five assists, no turnovers thus far, along with a couple of steals. Halftime, they had seven players who had between four and six points. Talk about sharing the wealth. And Trice in transition. There's Costello once again. And again, playing tap drill with himself. That's going to be a held ball, and the possession arrow points the other way. Well, Michigan State has done a really good job of establishing themselves right here. You're going to see two guys right here. They're watching the basketball. That allows Costello to go right to the rim. And as we've seen time and time again, it's Valentine who finds him, looks off the secondary defender, Costello, the beneficiary. Valentine with the six assists here in this one. Career high in that category is nine. down toward five that's a nice take to the basket and everything but the basket and somehow Doyle kept the possession alive with a fresh shot clock for the Ramblers nothing easy for that young man tonight all the defensive intensity has been directed toward him every time it looks like he may have a path to the rim there's another white jersey that rotates over and not just a white jersey it's usually a larger player in that white jersey who's impeding his path he's sitting on three out of ten from the floor in this one how much does this help Loyola when you get down to play in the Valley? Does this help? 
they could draw on this experience. They're not going to face a front line this consistently large in the Missouri Valley Conference. And, you know, they're, they're making that adjustment moving from the Horizon League up to the Missouri Valley, this being their second season. And if you kind of put it in context, let's take a look at some other schools that are somewhat similar. You know, Butler moving from the Horizon into the uh, Big East. They had a little bit of an adjustment. Xavier, kind of the same story. So when you're making a move, it's all relatively speaking, but in terms of resources that are there and the level of competition night in and night out, Loyola is going through that process right now. That foul the other end, by the way, was Christian Thomas's third, and Costello just... Nobody getting in his way. Ten points and a timeout. Not quite three minutes into the second half, but it still goes the home team's way. It is all number 19 Michigan State here with 17.07 left to go in this one. You know, I coach, coach youth basketball for a few years. I could never get my guys to do this. Watch where this pass is from Trice. Off the dribble, he understands the recipient, Scott. He puts enough mustard on it so the big guy, it goes right up to his waist. He doesn't have to bend down and get it. Many times you'll see people try to operate that, but the pass is too low and it breaks the stride. It was textbook. Yeah. Not even Cliff Notes, like the whole thing. <laughs> and another takeaway. And maybe just a little bit too cute with that pass. Certainly a party going on here right now in terms of what they're doing, but that was an unforced error for Tom Izzo's team. Spartans getting an opportunity to enjoy flexing a little muscle because their first game on the road at Navy was not an easy one. And certainly, the game against Duke, you knew that was going to be a battle, and it was. Navy a very difficult opponent, and I, I give Coach Tom Izzo and that program a lot of credit for even, there's not many teams in the country that would even schedule that game. But they went in there, Navy gave them everything they wanted, and they don't win that ball game without that, with the player they that young man right there, Travis Trice, who saved them with 25 points. They're going to count it. The basket is good. Chance at a three-point play for Travis Trice. Nice use of the spin move. Able to play through a little contact. Kept his eye on the target right there. If you're going to come down across the wrist, you have to make sure, Scott, that the shooter cannot get the ball above his shoulders. Don't just come in there and rake and then pull it off and allow the chance at the three-point play. Trice no Trice, four out of six from the free throw line on the season. Now has eight points on the night. And this lead has ballooned to 32 points. Still challenging every shot. And that's going to be an offensive foul. Putting the arm out in front of him. And getting called for the personal. Jeff White seeing his first action of the year in a tough situation. And we told you about the game on Tuesday night. Two legendary coaches, the Champions Classic, and Michigan State doing all they could to stay with Duke throughout the night. But as we said, they kind of wore down as the night went on, and Duke kind of comes at you in waves. They did, especially in the backcourt, and we've talked about some of the injuries that Michigan State is having to play through right now. They got in foul trouble, particularly Dawson and Trice early in that ball game. They, they clawed and fought their way back. But Duke was able to get things going inside with Jaleel Okafor. We've seen some outstanding post play tonight. Jaleel Okafor, particularly in the early going, really took it to a different level. Now check this out. Is that something that you look at as a positive? Because in final four seasons, by and large, there has been a loss to a top ten team. Duke was number four. They won the national championship. It was a loss to number two, Arizona. You get yourself tested because you're going to enter conference play and then tournament play. That's why this tournament coming up in Orlando is really kind of a unique situation because of the caliber of the top competition. But it also gets, especially these younger guys, Scott, in the, the habit of playing three games in three days and having to learn how to play against different styles and all those sorts of things. And it's uh, that young guy over there, Coach uh, Tom Izzo, does not duck anybody. I mean, he is known for putting together tough schedules and challenging his team and willing to forego maybe a couple of early season wins in order to build for the long term. Doyle hitting on the second. 
some full court pressure now. And somebody's got to come yeah. back and help the freshman or do they? I guess not. Well, all worked on that in their shoot around today, but we haven't seen a whole lot of it. But you have to have made baskets generally to press. Valentine on the turnaround for the elbow. He's got nine. Drive and the kick. That's a rhythm shot, and it's good for Milton Doyle. Let's not forget, he began his career at Kansas, didn't play a game for the Jayhawks before he transferred. And a really good job by the Juco transfer, Earl Peterson, of creating that opportunity for Doyle, utilizing dribble drive. They don't have a post game, so if they're going to get in the paint, it has to be off the dribble drive and force that defense to collapse. But an answer right back at the other end. Valentine making camp in that corner. He's got 12. Trying to back in a little up and under. James had an opportunity right there, and it looked like he changed his shot, thinking that he had somebody coming over his back that wasn't there. He took his eye off the rim, Scott. When he made that drop step, he was looking for the shot blocker. He took his eye off the target and left it a little long. We come up on six minutes gone here in this second half. Not much has changed from what we saw in the first. From the corner, it's Clark. And his second three of the night. Nine points on the evening for the freshman from Kansas City. That's a new career high in just three games. As we said, the folks over on that Spartan bench think there's going to be a lot more than just those nine points over the course of his career. Now an errant pass. And this time, James paid it off. And a good job of cutting under control by James, utilizing the jump stop and then putting his shoulder to the rim. Now along the block, it's Schilling. That's fine in the open man, and it's going to be a trip to the free throw line for Brandon Dawson. And if you're Loyola, you don't mind giving the foul on Brandon Dawson. This is not his area of strength. He's under 60% for his career. If he's able to get that up into the 70s by the time the conference season starts, that's going to be worth an extra point or two per ball game, not only for him individually, but certainly for the team collectively because he plays so much around the rim. Which is two for five. Come in. We've got a hockey line change coming. Or a Kentucky substitution. One or the other. <laughs> you don't see that very often. Well, this is an opportunity for Coach Porter Mosier to get some guys some minutes. Uh, outside of Wichita State, the Valley's very, very good. Wichita State may be the only team that's going to show them this type of top to bottom athleticism that they're going to see every night in the Valley. So the opportunity to get some of these guys a little bit of a taste of this experience, in particular in an environment like this, could be helpful. That's Jeff White with the ball. And he's the one with the ball in the corner right now, taking a look at the shot clock that's down under 10. White had it blocked as he tried to use the rim for protection. The other way, and that's going to be free throws coming for Nair. Tomorrow on BTM, the Buckeyes look to stay in the hunt. College football playoff, they host Indiana. Some of you will see Michigan State battle Rutgers at noon. At 3.30, it's Maryland taking on Michigan. Then, tomorrow night, it's Hoops. Hoosiers hosting Lamar, then the Badgers squaring off with Boise State. Coverage starts at 8 Eastern, presented by April Air on BTN and BTN to go. Did you call it sedentary Saturday? Sedentary Saturday, yes. Yeah.
And, and as much as I love this young man's nickname, Tum Tum, Tum Tum, his given name is even better. Lou Rawls. Oh. Lou Rawls is his first name, and he's a Lou Rawls Jr. You'll never find another name like that. You know, I knew one of us was going to go there, and yeah. I'm just glad it was you. I'm just glad you didn't sing it. So is everyone. That's going to be a push foul on uh, Costello. He says, who, me? His first team second. Substitution for the Spartans. The five four. Twenty twice now in the game. Trice will make his return to the ball game. And again, this is a matter of making sure that you keep everybody rotating through. Everybody stays fresh. Everybody also stays in the game. And that would tickle the rim and fell through for Ingram. His first two of the ball game. Costello. Felt the double team coming. Good ball reversal. Nice pass. Yep, Dawson up and under. Whew. I tell you what, you want to talk about how to reverse the ball. That was another textbook play. Way down in the corner. Nothing but the bottom of the net for Newt. Freshman out of Iowa. But honestly, a lot of what's happening offensively for the Spartans here is a clinic. Just sharing the basketball. Nice use of the inside pivot there by Brandon Dawson. Just creates space. And off the miss, they can look to run again. Trice, pretty shot fake and a better pass. Counted and a chance at a three-point play. They are authoring their own highlight film here tonight. And the highlights have been of the unselfish variety. Dawson with authority. Michigan State up big. Michigan State. Big night for Denzel Valentine. Sorry about that, Scott. Michigan State. I was so excited to get to Denzel Valentine. I jumped in on there. Denzel Valentine has jumped all over Loyola in a variety of ways. 12 points, 6 assists, a couple of steals. Rebounding from kind of a subpar performance versus Duke in terms of handling the basketball where he had five turnovers But tonight got his teammates involved. They went inside early and Costello, especially the beneficiary early Terrific leader on this team Nice luxury to be able to have not only a couple of seniors to help lead the way a junior who can do the same Co-captain for this squad As we said, they were very loose today, but it was not loose as in, all right, guys, quit messing around and play basketball. It was loose with a purpose. And part of that purpose we, we talked about a little bit earlier was putting guys like Forbes and Clark into situations, kind of pressure situations in a good-natured way, but putting some uh, emphasis on them, new guys to the program, and saying, hey, this is how we do things here. That foul call, by the way, was on Doyle. I think he was a little surprised by it. It's his second. And the team is well up over the limit now. Next one is going to have Michigan State shooting two for the rest of the ball game. Yeah, Schilling wiped out the guy. He didn't come to a complete stop. He's asking for instructions as to how to do it better next time. Don't blindside the guy and move. <laughs> It's a very technical turn. I thought so. That's what years of playing is going to yeah. get you. That kind of experience, that kind of savvy. Well, in a lot of ways, has to feel like he's doing a lot of this by himself. Yeah, there has been nothing easy for him. Because he's been able to get by the primary defender on a number of occasions, but that link that runs at him just so difficult and he's had to put a lot more air under some of those runners than he's probably accustomed to doing. Four for 12, 11 points on the night. He's really the only member of this Ramblers team that potentially, oh wow, to finish the talk and break one of the Spartans down off the dribble. Forbes didn't look that one in and that was a kind of a careless turnover. Throws it back the other way. 12 of them in the game now. 
for Michigan State. It's got you, you asked for Loyola, what do they want to continue to get out of this? Wichita State certainly the class of the Missouri Valley Conference, but that is a league that's underrated. Northern Iowa went on the road and won at Stephen, a. Stephen F. Austin. That's a big win over a team that won 30 games in a row a season ago. You have uh, Drake, which is starting to get back on the on the framework there. Bradley. So having this type of experience where they can go into some of those hostile environments where basketball really is the driving force may pay dividends for Loyola later. Time out on the floor. Home team up big. Monday night, the Spartans take on Santa Clara in a non-conference matchup right here in East Lansing. Cover starts at 7 Eastern, presented by April Air on BTN and BTN to go. Santa Clara followed by Ryder. The Ryder game will come up as part of that Orlando Classic on Thanksgiving. How do players feel about being away on the holiday? As long as they get fed, I think they're okay. And now... You've got two officials who are going to try to determine whether or not that was over and back. Or are they asking a question about the shock clock? Shock clock. You see Monday versus Santa Clara. And then Ryder, Marquette, Georgia Tech, Kansas, three others. At, and it's December 3rd against Notre Dame. Things are about to get turned up a notch here. And none of that is going to be happening right here except for the Santa Clara game. And that's a very interesting matchup potentially in that second round. Marquette, young coach, and Wojo up in Marquette. They uh, had a difficult outing a little bit earlier versus Ohio State, but potential there in that second round for another ACC matchup with Georgia Tech, coached by Brian Gregory, who was an assistant here at Michigan State for a number of years. And Coach Porter Moser is continuing to compete. He's trying to set the tone for these guys. Hey, you know what? Look, the score is going to be what it is, but we need to continue to compete and play through this. We're going to break it down to individual things that you're going to be focusing on. You break it down to segments of the game that you try to win if you can. But most importantly, you do things like that. And that's the kind of thing that gets the guys up off the bench. They're clapping, and, you know, the coaches applauding the fact that they're still very much mentally in this game, emotionally in this game. It's been a while since Loyola's had an opportunity to be thinking about a postseason. Of course, for the Spartans, this election Sunday is an annual party that you know is going to get them somewhere where they could end up doing something special. Happens every year. Nice play along the inside. Using his body to protect the ball for Christian Thomas. No chance at a three-point play with a foul on Dawson. Nice patience by Loyola. They kind of worked Michigan State side to side. And then one of the few times we've seen Loyola be able to get a post-up of their own. That was a tough catch and delivery there. Chance for the three-point play inside for Loyola. So Thomas taps off the three-point play. And even with that effort, creating the turnover, going down, getting a good offensive play, look up at the scoreboard, you're still doubled up with nine minutes left. Trice using his hand to ward off there. He basically was just pushing. Yeah, that was, that was a complete push with the inside hand. I mean, we had a good look at it, but neither one of us has a whistle. Play. And that's going to be an offensive foul on Doyle. He picks up his third. Watch the inside or left hand. Just get for good measure. Get, get off me. Oh. oh, it is close to the Heisman season, so he might as well strike the pose. Heisman, Marshawn Lynch would be proud to call that one his own. <laughs> that, that had a little bit of the Melvin Gordon look, didn't it? Going for better than 400. How about that? In three quarters, and how about if you're tired? How about if you're Tevin Coleman from Indiana? You run for 300 yards a yeah. career day, people forget it. <laughs> Barely even notice. Yeah. Well, that took some guts from Loyola because Michigan State had a full head of steam, and that's another play, you know, that you will put together a exactly and, and show these young guys, hey, this is how we continue to do it in play. Because they had every reason to get out of the way, and they did. We've been talking about their point guard, Jeff White, with the ball. He's had a knee problem. Got scoped three weeks ago, and they really didn't think that he was going to be back. 
in time for this game. He went through the walkthrough today, decided he wanted to play, and he's playing. He's a very big part of what this team is going to try to do this year. Oh, there you go, point center. That's Trice, as open as you can get. Beautiful job, follow through. Extension, didn't hurry. Most importantly during that situation, didn't take his eye off the rim with the defender running at him. That's three point right back the other way for Turk, who is their designated three point gunner. He was 39% from deep a year ago. That's another pick and roll. And it leads to the open look. Well, Brent Forbes is a transfer from Cleveland State where a season ago he was a second team All Horizon League performer and set a school record with 81 threes. He showed you why there. Now he could shoot that shot, and again, it's a lot more comfortable with the smaller device on his injured non shooting hand. Off the miss, the tip follow, the long arm of the law to Brandon Dawson. So he's got 15 and a quick timeout called for by Loyola. Don't forget, we've been telling you about it tomorrow on BTN. The Buckeyes looking to stay in the hunt for the college football playoff. They've got Indiana. Some of you will see Michigan State battle Rutgers at noon. 3.30, it's Maryland taking on Michigan. And tomorrow night, it's Hoops. Hoosiers hosting Lamar. Badgers squaring off with Boise State. Number starts at 8 Eastern. Presented by April Air on BTN. BTN to go. Wisconsin so impressive. Green Bay came in there. That's a very good team with an outstanding point guard and keeper Sykes and the Phoenix able to hang around for a while but behind the play of preseason player of the year candidate Frank Kaminsky, Sam Decker et al. They are hitting on all cylinders and I think people always think that this is a team that's not going to run. They can get up and down the floor. They have a lot of athletes and it starts inside with Kaminsky and his ability to score either with his back to the basket, creating off the dribble or stretch you out from behind the arc. Kind of two ways you can go off the march that he had last year. You take it and you run with it and you, you know, take that momentum into the next season. Or it takes a little while and you got a little bit of a, a final four hangover, as it were, before you really get back and rolling again. And the good news for Wisconsin is that he's right back to what he wants to be. And up on top, Chrisman drills a three. Good job of getting his feet set and stepping right into it. And I don't think Tom Izzo is happy with that defensive possession, despite the score that you see. Well, that's a freshman that he knows he's going to have to get some minutes from Clark, not only this year, but moving forward. And again, it's, a, it's an area, it's an opportunity to emphasize kind of the little things. A lot, a lot of people might let that slide. He doesn't. Because you never know in a game in February, if you fall asleep right here and give up on the play, getting out of your stance, that could come back to haunt you. Allowing that penetration left the open man up on top, and Christman didn't miss it. And that's a, absolutely a teaching point for a freshman. Now you're 74-38 right now with 6.48 to go. But the lesson here is you can't go to sleep. No. And Forbes is going to be interesting as they enter the tournament down in Orlando and maybe even into the Big Ten. You know, if teams don't start really jumping that right hand, Scott and forcing him to dribble with that padded left. Well, I, give the, I give the kid a lot of credit because those are the first couple of games. He really couldn't put the ball on the floor at all. Well, Tom Izzo was saying he's in a huddle. He's saying, well, wait, we can't go this way right now because he can't use that hand. That's going to be a three for Ingram. He's got five. And that's another good sign for Loyola. Not just that he made that shot, Scott, but Ingram is a public league product. Loyal, of course, in the city of Chicago and recruiting Illinois. There's a lot of talent there as well as the city. And Loyola, when, when they took over the job, only one guy from Illinois, they've increased that to about a half a dozen. Loyola doing what they can to hang in there, but with 6.10 to go, this one belongs to Michigan State.
Spartans, and as it is in this game, sometimes you get away with it, and sometimes you don't. Well, Travis tries to watch the inside or left. <laughs> just, that's called creating space with a purpose. No foul call there as he's able to get all the way and complete. Goes to the well a second time, and we'll go the other way. The karma train made a stop. That first one, it was like the Heimlich maneuver <laughs> from the front. <laughs> Travis Trice, another one of the guys, though, who was part of what set the tone today at shoot-around. It was, it was his, the way he carried himself, the way he got his teammates involved. And there's a lot of respect for him, not only because of his production, Scott, but this is a guy that's battled a lot of injuries, some illness, has fought through it, had to assume some different roles in the program, and now he, along with Dawson, cannot just be secondary or tertiary players. They have to be primary players, and thus far, they have answered that call admirably. Clark with a nice offensive rebound, perhaps making up a little bit for the defensive mistake a few moments ago. Al trying to do even more. He can shoot again. And you know, I saw him in shoot around. He missed four in a row with nobody on him. Adrenaline helps. And off the miss, still good hustle by the Spartans. And Trice is in rhythm. And that's going to be up over the back on Costello. And again, that's a nice hustle play by Loyola. They didn't give up on him. They put their smaller body on the larger body Costello and forced him to go through them. As a result, they rewarded them get possession. As Trice takes a seat, another five-man substitution for the Ramblers. No doubt the size and the length for the Spartans have been bothering the Ramblers all night. What a nice drive. Nice shot, I should say, on the line drive jump shot for Thomas. Good use of a little misdirection dribble. They dribble toward the right. The defense started to shift, and then they kick it back. And it's going to be a foul call on Clark. Going over the back on the rebound. And again, a good job by Loyola of putting a body on the larger Michigan State player, not giving up on the play and forcing them to come over the top. And puts the Spartans up over the limit. So Loyola shoots for the remainder of this ball game, which has 4.50 left to go. Ben Richardson out of Kansas won a couple of state titles. Two-time first-team All-State player. Clark filling the lane on the break. Counting a chance at a three-point play. And I think he might have just gotten teed up because he got it. He was talking. I think that Wesley Clark just got teed up a conduct technical after the play was completed. Clark, nice job of running the floor. Takes a little bit of contact. He says something's right in his ear, woofing at him. Then he says something else. I thought I saw that. The official came in. Good job of stepping in there. A technical, a conduct technical. You get the, the feeling he was doing and turning around and screaming without any realization that he was doing it right in somebody's face. Oh, well, maybe not. Yeah. And what you're seeing right now is Coach Tom Mizzo bringing over his senior leader, Brandon Dawson, and saying, you know what? This is deal with message. it. Yep, you deal with it. I tell you what, when you get into a situation like that, and you've seen this historically, I know that all of the focus has been on spectacular freshmen in college basketball over the last several years. But when you have a coach who has the ability to do that with senior leadership on his team, that's when you see teams do special things. And now he's going to get coached a different way. 
Cleaved his case. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. He'd be better off trying to deal with Judge Judy. He's not going to get any kind of verdict there. You think, you think Marvin was buying into that smile he had? No. <laughs> yep. I think your description of was exactly correct. Heads up. Valentine was a step and a half ahead of that play. He saw it developing. He saw he had the ability to dribble, and he had peripheral vision, and he was able to find his teammate, Costello. And off the miss. Back down the other way for what's got to feel like a long night for the Ramblers of Loyola. And that will fall once again. You can see that Milton Doyle is a guy who had a lot of success in the Missouri Valley Conference last year, and he's going to again this year. There goes Costello up and under. And on a night when he's got a career high, he's had a lot of help from teammates who've been putting him in very good positions to catch and score. Basketball on BTN is presented by April Air. Feel good inside. And brought to you in part by State Farm. It pays to double check. Talk to your agent today. They're sharing a ball all over the place here tonight. I'm just glad someone didn't sneak in like the uh, Saints fan. <laughs> Take it from her. How rough was that? Oh. Now, the guy came out and said that he was giving the ball to his nephew or his granddad. I forget who it was. He was, he was keeping, but yeah. he took the ball away from a young lady who clearly wanted it. Yeah. And it was intended for. I'm sorry. Some things you just don't do. Lump of coal in his stocking this holiday season. Yeah. I'm used to that. I've got my own mind. Honestly, at this point in time, it's possible that he feels like being a Saints fan may be punishment enough because that team has not done what they thought they were going to do this year in New Orleans. Some smiles there. And one out of two for Costello. He's got the new career high with 13. And just one shy of his career high with 11 rebounds on the night. And he had the first six points of the ball game for Michigan State to really set the tone. He's got 44 points in the paint on the evening for the Spartans. That's a shot in rhythm. That's what they've been hoping for all night. They just didn't have that there. Coming off a down screen, coming around, catch, shoot. They just didn't get many opportunities to do that because, frankly, Michigan State wouldn't have let them. The coach Porter Mosier had success at Arkansas Little Rock before coming to Loyola of Chicago. He was an assistant under Rick Majerus at St. Louis, so competing allowing guys to get better finding people that are going to allow him to continue to climb the ladder within the missouri valley conference he has that opportunity now. there's one thing you learned playing under rick majerus was he probably learned an awful lot about how to get his team to play defense that st louis team was awfully good at it jim cruz continued that they got a different situation now for them this yeah. year You know, when you're making that kind of adjustment, you know, the Horizon League has some outstanding, outstanding teams, but not as many as the Missouri Valley Conference. And, you know, the amount of resources that schools were able to apply to basketball certainly goes up when you go to the Valley. And so people have to be patient as you're trying to ratchet up not only the talent level, but the resources necessary to attain that talent level. Aaron lost the handle on the basketball and a turnover for the freshman. One of the things you look at statistically it's a probably somewhat troublesome for Michigan State tonight the 14 turnovers which is right at their season average but in a game like this you don't want to be turning it over that many times oh. 
everything challenged. Every shot challenged all right. That's a double dribble. For turnover number 15. And congratulations. Certainly well deserved with 2.22 left. Coming in, you knew this was a, an eminently winnable game. Tom Izzo is now going to go to 54 and 0 all time at home in the month of November. And as you try to integrate the newer players, the freshmen, into the system that you've got here with the established group of seniors and juniors who start the game. I would say success. Really good job right there by Tom Tom of pulling up under control. He's certainly a floor general in training right now for the Michigan State Spartans. Tom Tom, by the way, came from Mom and the movie Three Ninjas. Yeah, she said it was because he wanted to eat all the time. Doesn't look like it. No. But you never argue with mom. No. Once again, if another look along the inside. This one for Schilling comes fairly easily. And we've got apparently blood of Ben Richardson. And Austin getting an opportunity to rest in the last minutes of a ball game. The hard work he's going to have to put in for the rest of the year, he deserves it. 15 and 7 on the night for Dawson. He was in the top five in rebounding in the Big Ten Conference a year ago. And missed a number of games with a with an injury. Michigan State battled injuries all last season. Yeah, they finally broken right hand. Yeah, they finally started to come together toward the Big Ten tournament and then moving forward, but they were without Affleck for a period of time with a, a variety of ailments. Shoulder, wrist, Adrian Payne, he was hurt for a period of time. They never really were able to get everyone together for an extended period of time until toward the latter part of the conference regular season and then into the Big Ten tournament moving forward. Make sure the court is cleaned up as well. And apparently the song selection is appreciated by those on the bench. Yeah. I have no idea what it is. I didn't write this one, so I don't know. This is not a cover of an old blue roll. No, no. Unless it's a deep hidden track that I'm not aware of. The important thing is they know it and they're enjoying it. Apparently everybody is. Right now, if you're Loyola, you, you just feel like they're just mopping the whole floor. I mean, just let's go. Once again, you got to make sure yeah. that, that's protocol. These guys are just following the protocol laid out. Yeah. Coach Tom Izzo was over there. Hey, let's go. Once again, they're trying to follow protocol as best they can. But it comes with just 101 left to go in a 37-point game. And you can understand a little bit of impatience on anybody's part. Up on top. Three-pointer no good. 
Big rebound. Haven't seen many of those tonight in terms of second chance points. Only two of them for the Ramblers. Now make it four. No. That went down, around, and everything but in. Shot clock turned off. They don't have to shoot, but they will. That would have been wanted one. Yeah, that would have been good from 25. Unfortunately, he shot it from 20. <laughs> and back the other way, Peterson, who's been that quiet here tonight. That's a couple. And that will be your final score. They dribble the clock away. And Michigan State wins again in the home opener. Make it 38 in a row now. And 20 and 0 for Tom Izzo as he begins his 20th season. 87-52 the final. And I guess you would say a team that took care of business tonight. They certainly did. They set the tone early. Scott going inside and establishing Costello. Very good job of sharing the basketball. Unselfish. Locked down the, the best offensive player, Milton Doyle, for the Loyal of Chicago Ramblers and never looked back. So congratulations all around. Tom Izzo wins the 470th game of his head coaching career. 87 to 52 in a clinic of passing along the inside. Coming up next, it is BTN Live. Stay tuned for that. For our entire crew, thanks for watching. A huge victory tonight for the Spartans.